Nah. Hi, hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Jer. We are going to be talking about the finale episode of Canada's Drag Race. It is no longer Melinda Verga's Drag Race because she unfortunately has gone home, but that does not mean that she didn't win the season in a lot of our hearts as some of the best television that's happened to this show in, I can't even tell you when. So we got a lot of ground to cover. Let's get into it. First off, this is an amazing cast. It's a great top four. I want all of them to win equally for a lot of different reasons. We've got Nira, who's the underdog. This person who this entire competition has really just risen to the challenge and tried their best. They found themselves in some bottom placements that maybe weren't completely deserved, specifically in the design challenge. Every time Nira persevered, she always came up on top and I thought she was really great television. Then we've got Denim, who I think brought so much uniqueness to the competition with their style of drag, their very unique approach and out of the box thinking in the way that they approach the challenges on the runways. I think Denim has brought some of the most interesting fashion to this show that I think would even rival a US season. And then we've got Aurora who has brought such a unique style of drag with doing something so hyper femme while also being hyper androgynous at the same time. Venus has really done a great job in this competition. They've never gone into the bottom placements and I think that on some level should be rewarded. And then you've got Aurora who had a lot of ups and downs through the competition but was always very solidly herself. She always brought so much culture into everything she did and I think that's something that we haven't really seen rewarded too much on the show. Not specifically in Canada, but just in general in Drag Race. Cultural perspective of drag doesn't typically get recognized or celebrated and I'm glad that Aurora did. So I want them all to win for different reasons, but Venus did win the entire thing. And even though I want everyone to win, by someone winning, that means that somebody else loses. And I don't like that Aurora lost. I don't like that Denim lost. I think I'm okay with Nira losing because I genuinely think that Nira was the weakest in the competition and was the weakest in this episode. But that underdog story I always want to root for. So it's not that I'm upset that Venus won, it's that I'm upset that Aurora lost. So there's a couple parts to this that we're gonna break down into immense detail as we go. There are multiple parts to this final episode. There's an interview with Giselle. There's a photo shoot with Giselle, very Titanic style, battling for the crown, trying to capture your essence into a picture. And I think that everybody did really solidly. Everyone took their perspective on drag into this. Venus's was very Titanic. Aurora's was super glam cam. Mira felt really unserious and casual in her approach. And Denim took kind of this high concept with it. And then the interview portion, because we only got to see what the editors wanted us to see, we really don't know how they all did. And some people think that maybe Venus did better, which is why she got more screen time. But the moment that Venus got more screen time than everyone else, I knew that it was probably gonna go in their direction because everybody else got really small segments. And that was present in every aspect of the challenge, which I think that really upset me too. I don't mind that somebody is going to win a season or that the editors want to prime us for that person's win, but it feels reductive of everybody else's work to really try and push this narrative. This is the winner. This is the one. We're gonna feed them a lot to you so that you keep consuming. So by the end, you'll be ready to eat the last part of this course. Course one, we're gonna give you a lot of Venus and we're not gonna give you a lot of anybody else. What that does is create longing for the others and then it makes us feel a sense of missing out, FOMO, so to speak, that it makes us wonder why the others didn't get as much of a spotlight. I think it worked in the opposite way that the editors intended it to, is to feel like a big meal throughout the entire thing but it's sort of like going to a buffet and there's a lot of potatoes, but there's no biscuits. What's wrong with these things that you gave us less of them? Did you think that we didn't want them or did you just neglect to put them out? You have more in the back, but somebody didn't like them and wanted us to like this other thing more. And this is not Venus's fault at all. This is 
all on the editors who are responsible for giving us this last episode in a cohesive way. And I feel like up until this point, no episode has really felt like, ooh, that's the one that's going home because the editors have given them more talking heads or they've really given us more content of them. It was a strangely edited episode. And then the main challenge is to write a song to the same beat. Everybody gets the same song. They all get to do whatever lyrics they want to do. It was kind of a like dumb, stupid song. I didn't like, I didn't like the music at all. <laughs> I thought it was stupid. Thought it was so dumb and juvenile. That was the thing, it was juvenile. And I didn't like that, but whatever. We got more time in the recording session with Venus and in the rehearsals with Venus. It felt like Nelly and the choreographer were helping Venus get to the end product more, which I think also again contributed to that kind of clunky editing. It felt to me like the whole show was really just trying to get us primed for it. Having these two authorities in the vocals, the production, and the dance production side really fine tuning Venus's product so that it was perfect. It made it feel like they were less hands-on with the others, so maybe it feels to us like they're more responsible for their body of work than Venus was, who got a little help along the way. And I'm sure the others got just as much help. Again, this is an editing problem and not a Venus problem, but I, it, I would be a bad commentator if I didn't bring up that that is the perception, and I'm, a, I'm going to go on a limb and say that's why a lot of people are not too happy that Aurora lost, because it feels from the episode that they are basically the wind beneath Venus's wings carrying her to the crown, and they're sort of just leaving everybody in the wake to sort of catch up along with them. That's the way the editing felt. Not a Venus problem. Editing and production. And then we get to the main stage, and Brooke was kind of giving us a Betsy Johnson type of look and the look was not something that I would particularly wear to a finale. And I think that whoever gave her that wig should have put it back on the wig head. It should have never put it on her head because they were unqualified to make a wig for Brooklyn Heights. This is really the only dud look that I think Brooke has had all season. Every other look has been spectacular. I was kind of bummed that this was the final look. So here are the songs. We have the Asian Sensation by Aurora. Um. I'll be honest, I hated the performance look. The length was super weird and it kept feeling like it was supposed to come off. That weird cut of this very well-known silhouette that normally goes to the floor, hitting right at the coochie, almost felt like baby's first drag costume. And then it's not right, but you sell it anyway. It felt like it should have come off the whole thing, but it never did. The song itself was fine, but I think Aurora had the distinct disadvantage of being the first one out because the backing music and the track is not good. Can we just all admit that the song itself was not good? Aurora's lyrics were fine, but the song is bad. So Aurora kind of has the disadvantage of being the first one out because we're very clearly aware of, it's not a drag number song and it's not really good pacing wise to get a lot of good words in there. And I think Aurora did the best that she could with what she had, and I don't think it was bad, but it just, it's the first impression, so it's not as strong. Then we get to Denim, who did the Trantasy. I loved this title. I love that Denim is constantly infusing their transness into their drag. That's a super important part about who they are. Like how Aurora's culture is baked into her drag. Denim is always just injecting that last little bit in of androgyny, of transness, of this queer artistry that's so strong. Performance outfit was one of my favorites of the night. I loved the song. I loved the change of charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and transgender. What a smart way of taking C-U-N-T and putting Denim's unique spin and Denim's unique perspective on drag into that. That was smart. And then also referencing being a Canadian tuxedo was genius as well, because Denim's name is literally a Canadian tuxedo. It's, it's smart, it's levels of creativity 
that I think a lot of the others lacked. Then we've got Nira doing Stamped Drag Queen. Mm, baby. <laughs> oh, I didn't like it at all. I hated everything about it. The outfit was really cute. The hair was such a miss on the mark. I don't know what she was thinking. The hair was not right. The song was so forgettable. There were too many words. It was a Lord of the Rings novel in a drag queen song, and it didn't have to be that many words. It was absolutely a miss. And then at the very end is Venus doing the K-U-N-T manifesto. I really liked the airline intro. I thought it was transportative. I don't think the outfit and the hair were for me. I wasn't a huge fan of either one of them. I love though that it referenced their entire run on the show. There wasn't a single beat missed. I think Venus was really the only one who managed to get the right words in for this song. And I can't help wonder how much of that was because Nelly was hand-holding a little bit more than some of the others, or if that Venus just took the notes better. The way that this was edited was all so convoluted, it's impossible to know, but it was a banger. Really the only good one next to Denim's, in my opinion. But again, I didn't like the outfit or the hair. Then we get to the final category, which is the runway and it's Coronation Eleganza. So first out of the gate, we have denim. And oh my God, this is one of my favorite finale looks I've ever seen from a queen and probably the whole of Drag Race. I think denim is constantly raising the bar. This to me is sort of on par with what Trinity and Naomi did in All Stars 4 that super elevated look that is so perfectly them and just captures this essence. There are not a lot of performers that come through this show that have a fully realized version of who they are from start to finish. And Denim has done that every week, coming out and doing top surgery on the runway in a rhinestone bodysuit with the breastplate coming off and then having surgery scars, something that so many trans men can identify with, I think really spoke a, a lot of volumes into Denim's body of work. This representation is so important of what Denim's done. And even though Denim's been super up and down through the competition, hasn't always done the best in areas of improv and comedy, Denim is doing something so unique to drag and with drag. And drag isn't just about if you can dance and twirl and swirl and tell a joke. There's so much more to it than that. And I think the concept and the artistry behind it are important to elevate as well. And that's why this was my favorite look of the night. Plus the details on this are immaculate. Just immaculate. I loved that. Next, we have Venus giving us a very simple silhouette. I think I've seen this dress at JCPenney. That's not a read. It's just a very simple dress. The hair was nice. She literally looked like her mom in the makeover challenge. And I think that is really beautiful that we've got to see her mom on TV. And then we get to see her come out and she looks just like her. It was really nice homage to her family. She looked gorgeous. It was, it was very simple for a finale dress. Then we have Nira giving one of my, probably my least favorite looks of the night. I didn't like the proportions of the shape and then the chiffon trailing off to the side. I thought she was fiddling with it a little bit too much. Love the mug, love the hair. I like elements of this. It just felt lacking silhouette. And I'm such a huge Nira fan. It hurts to say that I didn't like this because I also just didn't think it was representative of her. I would have preferred some type of really asymmetrical bodysuit that had the train coming off of it. And then maybe the train can remove and elements can come off. And I feel like this outfit kind of missed the mark. Then we have my second favorite look of the coronation looks. And that is Aurora Matrix giving us this beautifully constructed. It is so lovely to look at. Every detail from the hair all the way to the hem at the bottom of the skirt. Everything is well made, well thought, has a story to tell, and it's eye-catching. I love the little glimpse of the waist. I thought it helped break up the fabric 
so that it brings it to an elevated drag place and not just a glamour place. Aurora killed this week. Aurora and Denna were my favorite two looks on the runway. So now it's time for drag math <laughs> because I had such a hard time figuring out who I wanted to be in the top two based off of this. I did a lot of complicated math on the side, which I'll spare you all the details. But the way that it came out, Denim was my number one. I like Denim's performance look the most. I like Denim's runway the most. Their performance was my second favorite. And their photo was my third favorite. But point wise, because I did math, point wise they were number one. My number two and three were split. It was almost even, it was off by one point. Venus was in the second place. I liked Venus's track and performance more. I liked their photo the second best, and both their looks were in my third place category for both of them. Aurora was one point away from Venus. I liked Aurora's photo the best. Their runway was my second favorite. The actual performance was my third favorite, and their look in the performance was my fourth favorite. Nira pretty much landed in the fourth place spot in every category, except I liked their look better than I liked Aurora and Venus's. So they were just right underneath Denim by a technicality, but only because I did not like what Aurora and Venus were wearing at all in that performance. I didn't like what Nero was wearing either, but I, it was passable. <laughs> I feel like the look for the final performance has to matter. It has to count. It's your last impression. And so I did count that as its own subcategory. So with Aurora and Venus being so close to each other, literally off by one point, I went down and did all the math. And I went through the entire season. There were points where I thought that Venus should have been low, especially in the design challenge. I thought that should have been bottom three. Aurora's win in the Brusical should have gone to Nira. Both Aurora and Venus were really strong in QVC. I thought that Aurora should have been in the number two spot in the first impressions ball over Venus. But Venus was so strong in Snatch Game, and Aurora was really weak in Snatch Game. And then in the girl group, they were so close in points for me. Same with the lip sync. But Aurora slammed every one of those songs. So their points got even more muddled, and I had to just go based off of what I want to see more of. Who do I want to see more from with their reign? Both of them, it's so hard to pick, and I really don't know who I wanted up there. It became so complicated as we got to these last little bits for me, but I knew the edit was going to favor Venus. When we get to a final performance, even though I think that Denim deserved one of the top two spots with either Venus or Aurora, I think that Denim would have gotten steamrolled. It would have been such an unfair fight which made it even more complicated that it was Venus versus Aurora for the final lip sync. And when it came down to it, I thought personally that Aurora captured the vibe of the song better. And so I thought it was going to go to her for that reason because she really did kill that song. I thought they both were really showing how badly they wanted it. I think they both were evoking so much emotion and it really got so complicated on how I was feeling and at the end, Venus wins, and I'm only upset because that means Aurora lost. I think if Aurora had won, I would have been upset that Venus lost. So it's hard. I, I have so many conflicting feelings. Positive, but conflicted. The internet seems pretty unhappy that Venus won. I haven't really seen a ton of positivity about their win. And I just want to say, please don't send hate to these queens. I also do think, from what I remember, the votes on Aurora's social posts were higher than Venus's. Something similar happened in Drag Race years ago where one of the contestants got more votes and more likes. I think maybe it was Monet over Jinx and Jinx won and people were very upset because Monet was clearly the one that everyone wanted to win, even though Jinx had a better track record. And I think it was kind of similar in this too. It felt very Jinx Monet, even though Jinx rightfully deserved the win for how she performed all season, Monet killed that last challenge, and if the point was to kill the last challenge to win, track records should not matter. Drag Race wants to continue this idea that they're gonna pick somebody who's got a better report card. Don't even ask the audience what we want. Don't ask us to 
send in our votes if our votes don't matter. If they don't count and production is going to crown who they want to crown, don't ask for the opinion of those people watching because then it creates a sort of dissonance between the consumer and the product. I think to wrap us up, because this is the last time we'll see these people on TV until potentially a Canada All-Stars or until one of them shows up on a Versus the World, let's talk about the final Queen's runways. So first off, we have CC Superstar giving us a Bride of Frankenstein pumpkin head look. Love. This was one of my favorites of the night. Probably my second favorite. Then we have the Girlfriend Experience giving us such a cute moment. I love the feathers, love the nude part right in the middle, and she looks beautiful. We have Luna Dubois giving us a beautiful mug, a wonderful top, and then a raw skirt. Everything from the waist up was really good. This felt like an Instagram look where you're only concerned about the bust upwards, not really about what the camera can't see. This was a RuPaul look. Then we have Amy Yance Chanel giving us something very beautiful and conceptual. I love the message, Black Lives Matter. I love that Amy was like, you know what? I've been pulling trade. I don't need to shave this beard. <laughs> I won't get laid if I shave this beard. Then we have Kitten Caboodle giving us a very classic silhouette, very classic drag look with the reveal from this big coat. I love how fun and camp Kitten is always going with her drag. She makes me happy. I wish that we could have seen her in the top four somehow. Then we have my absolute favorite of the night. This was my number one, Kiki Ko giving us this red heart, a Yorda. Is that what it's called? I don't know. She looked so good. I wanted Kiki to be in the top four so bad. I don't know who I would have replaced her with, but I wanted her here. And I mean, my God, this look is tops. Her package was incredible this season. Then we have a Mother Melinda giving us an I don't give a fuck look. <laughs> I love her so much. I love that she just comes out doing what she's going to do. This is the most pedestrian prom look that could ever exist in the history of Drag Race. And Melinda came walking out here sauntering on this runway as if she owned the whole building. She owned 100% of Canada's Drag Race and she is going to be buying stocks in Global All-Stars despite coming out in a JCPenney dress. We, we stand. This is a wonderful finale. I loved everybody in the top four. I wanted all of them to win for different reasons. I'm very happy that Venus won, but it's sad that Aurora lost. What were your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below and I will see you very soon for the Dragula finale. I have made a personal promise to myself that I am never going to review two drag seasons at once. This is never gonna happen again. This was so overwhelming, trying to balance Dragula and Canada's Drag Race and thank God for that break. So I'll see you very soon for the Dragula finale and maybe eventually we'll talk about either UK versus the world two or we can talk about 16. I haven't started it yet, but maybe we can talk about that. See you soon and keep an eye out for more Drag Race videos coming down the pipe. I've got a lot of stuff that I've got planned for this year. Goodbye. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to click that like button. And if you wanna see more, hit subscribe. Goodbye.